Hi, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV. Welcome to my iPhone programming course. We'll be designing an app from scratch. We're going to learn how to work with Objective-C and a lot of the, the common iOS controls that you'll see in a lot of iPhone apps. So I think this is a, a really great starting point. If you've got an idea and you're looking to really get started with it, this course will teach you all the fundamentals and the design patterns that you need to use when creating an iPhone app. I'm going to teach you how to create a utility style app. You're going to need some programming experience coming into this course. If you don't have any, I have an introduction course that teaches you everything that you need to know to get started. And then we'll talk about the materials, which would be a Mac, and then some of the goals on completing this course. We're starting with utility style applications because these are very focused apps. They are an app built to help someone to accomplish a task or to calculate or, or solve some kind of problem. I'm going to give you three examples to sort of set the mood so that you can sort of see the style of applications that we'll be building. First, we have a calculator app. Now, there's a lot of calculator apps, but use this as sort of an exploration into how you can solve someone's problems. Maybe uh, there's a special type of calculator that would be helpful for a cook, something that can time the turkey as it's cooking based on how much it weighs, or maybe something that can help someone who does a lot of barbecue so that they can know when they need to check on the, the barbecue or the smokers and, and stuff like that so that they can make sure that they're making really good food. A guitar tuner, I think, is a, a fantastic idea for an application. There's a microphone on the iPhone. It can play music. You can help someone who's musically inclined. And if if that's your background, this might be a, a good introduction and app to sort of explore. Now, there are some more advanced things working with the audio. But again, having some kind of challenge is always a good thing. Then we have a unit converter app. Now, I like this one because it sort of has a different way to present the information. It's not your standard iOS app. And that's what's really important when we're working with iPhone apps. We have a, a touchscreen device. We don't need to display information like we have on a Windows PC or a Mac. We can display information differently. We can interact with information differently. And so this app, I think, really sort of should be a guide into you exploring new ways to interact with content, new ways to help people, and really present the information in your application. In terms of requirements, having some Objective-C programming experience is a big plus for this course. However, you can get by if you know another common programming language like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, or Ruby. As long as you understand the fundamentals of programming, it's fairly straightforward to pick up a different programming language. It's just a little bit of a different syntax, so things are going to look a little different. For the most part, everything behaves the same. There will be some differences with some of the design patterns in the APIs for the iOS controls and the way we do things, but that's not too complicated. So if you don't have any programming experience, I have an introduction iPhone course that will teach you all about Objective-C, especially if you've never programmed before. In terms of materials for this course, you'll need a Mac. It needs to be a 2008 or later. Or you can use MacInCloud.com if you have a PC. Now, the 2008 or later is the minimum requirements. I really recommend something more modern like a 2012 or 2013 Mac. And the benefits are that it'll be faster and more responsive so that you can spend more time coding and less time waiting. We'll be using Xcode 5 and Mavericks, which is the latest version of the operating system for Mac. That's 10.9. You can get by with Mountain Lion if you have other software that doesn't work well with Mavericks. But I highly recommend staying on the 
latest version of the operating system with Xcode 5. Lastly, you'll want a notebook. And I think a notebook's good for two reasons. First, you can track your progress. You can jot down notes, questions, and, and sort of leave space so that you can come back and fill in some of those answers as you work on learning the materials. And where I find notebooks really helpful is I have a lot of iPhone app ideas, and I can't keep them all in my head at once, so I like to use the notebook as a way to catalog the different app ideas, the different interfaces that I'm thinking about, how things might work, and a notebook is a really good tool so that you can just draw out your ideas, play with them on paper, doing the paper prototyping, and then decide if you want to try and implement that idea. In terms of goals for you in this course, I'm going to teach you how to use a lot of the common iOS controls. We'll be working with the UI table view so that you can display lists of information, and you'll be learning how to save data to your iPhone and then load it up so you can save and load information for the user. We'll be working on laying out the user interfaces, and now with Xcode 5, there is way better support for auto layout, so that's going to be a big plus as we're working on our interfaces. And lastly, I really want you to engage your imagination. Try to think a little bit differently about how you might approach your iPhone app. We're not on Windows anymore. We don't need to mimic all of the nuances from the legacy operating systems that you grew up with. Try to think different. Use a lot of different iPhone apps. See how other people are doing it. And see if you can take away anything from their ideas and and put them into your apps. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create some utility apps in this course. Again, you'll need a bit of programming experience to really get the most out of this course. You'll need a Mac, or if you have a PC, you can use macandcloud.com. And then with this course, I really want to teach you how to get started from scratch to build a fully functional iPhone app using a lot of the common iOS controls. All right, so it's time to jump over to Xcode and work on our first app idea. I'll be explaining all the different parts of Xcode that you'll need to know how they work and where to find the information that you need. Let's get started.